my uh, my next question, I guess, is 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 understanding Western culture and how it evolved and how we've gotten to this point that we are today. Um, have you done any research into other cultures that maybe haven't taken this path that have maybe found a, a really good balance between these two perspectives, the two hemispheres perspectives, and have developed cultures and societies that live, say, more in balance and in more connection with, say, the natural world or the local, the ecology that they're, say, closest to or near. Uh, partly what, what comes to my mind are, um, I know that we tend, I, I can tend to over-romanticize, um, say, indigenous cultures, but um, from what I understand, uh, that here within the, the continental U.S., there are certain indigenous uh, tribes, indigenous groups of human beings that have been very well adapted to their local ecology, their local land. And what they've, they've done is, like you said, human beings are very capable and very good at manipulating their environments. But with, of course, being mindful that they are part of a greater whole, that they're not just going to take what they want from the uh, their, their local environment without understanding the consequences of doing so for the, all the other living things and all the systems that they inevitably are going to affect um, as a result of that. Precise. Yeah. And yeah. so I, I, I remember reading, uh, and I wish I could remember the details, and I feel bad that I can't remember the details right now, but there were certain indigenous cultures that what they would do is they had very controlled fires that they would set in the grasslands here. I think it was in the Midwest. And as a result, the local ecology, the, the, the local ecosystems flourished as a result. You know, you saw more wildlife was able to graze. Yeah. You know, the forests that existed were able to thrive. Um, overall, human beings had a very beneficial Although it was manipulating the environment, it was a very beneficial manipulation for all the players involved. And we still want to manipulate our environments, but we seem to have lost that greater perspective, that bigger whole. Um, so my, my, I guess the question before I started rambling <laughs> right there um, was, <laughs> in, in your research, did you ever feel or ever did you ever compare other developed cultures with, with Western culture, Western points of view? Um, oh, more generally, yes, um, I, I did, and at the end of the book, I, I make some very small um, suggestions from what I've uh, learned from others about Oriental, uh, by which I mean Far Eastern cultures like China, Japan, and Korea, mm. um, which has always fascinated me all my life. Uh, partly because my grandfather lived in Japan before the First World War, and when I was growing up, he used to tell me very amazing things about the cultures and I, I became fascinated very young um, and I'm very broadly sympathetic to uh, Taoism and Zen Buddhism and to the paradoxical way of thinking of um, those cultures but I also remember years and years ago reading a book by Reich at Navajo religion since you're talking about uh, uh, North America and um, I found extraordinary resonances there with the thinking I had at the time. This was before I, I trained in medicine and uh, uh, went into neuropsychiatry. Uh, and also I've been involved in making a film um, which is coming out on DVD, uh, I believe, any week now, like next week, I think. Um, <laughs> so it's an entirely uh, unplanned piece of uh, <laughs> um, advertising. But um, there's an Laura called Bruce Parry, who um, is quite well known for um, a, a series he made called Tribe, in which he lived with a, an Amazonian tribe for six months. But he, he, in any case, made a film called Tawai, T-A-W-A-I, A Voice from the Forest. And um, I, I take part in that film in a small way. And he's looking there at exactly what you're saying about the harmony that exists between the natural world and the way of life of indigenous people. Uh, some of them hunter-gatherers, um, but some of them like um, uh, uh, Indians in, 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 um, you know, in, in, in the Indian subcontinent, not, not hunter-gatherers, but still nonetheless having a completely different philosophy of the way in which we relate to the rest. You know, to, I, I don't want to just say trees and plants, but the whole of the natural world and indeed the cosmos. So that is left out of our of our way of thinking. And you're absolutely right. That is uh, essential. And one of the things that um, 
uh, I would like to do. I mean, when, when I started studying medicine, one of the other things I, I thought of doing was actually learning Chinese, but <laughs> I can't do everything. And, and that one's <laughs> rather gone by, by, the, by the wayside. But I have read it, uh, quite a lot around that culture. And in making another film, which is a film called The Divided Brain, about my work, I went to see uh, Joe Henrich at Harvard, who's an anthropologist. And he was saying to me, you know, because I, I was saying, you know, it's really like the West and the rest, because it's not just, as it were, the Chinese. It's everybody except modern Westerners sees the world in a totally different way. And he said, you're absolutely right. And that when we were in, as it were, South America or Africa or whatever, our constant refrain was, they're more Chinese than the Chinese. In other words, <laughs> the there is a, a way of thinking that has grown out of the wisdom of ancient cultures that have lived in harmony with the natural world on the whole for very long periods. And we alone stand out as this know-it-all culture that probably will go down in history as the most foolish, <laughs> if there is any history after us to record it, um, the, the most foolish, arrogant, self-destructive and uh, least... Uh, wise culture that you know that there that has been so I, I do feel we're we're you know we're at a, a, a point a decision point or maybe past the decision point but there's always hope you know that we really do need radically to shift um, the way we think about what a human being is and not just a machine or a computer at all what it is to live together um, what it is to live with nature we have no idea, in fact, what the natural world is. And, you know, all our reductive ideas about it uh, approximate it to some kind of a mechanism. Mm. And it, it, take it from me, and I'm writing a book about this at the moment, it doesn't work anything like any mechanism that you know.